Hey y'all, how's everyone doing? My name's Alyssa, I'm a student and a freelance artist living in Los Angeles, and today I'm here to show you guys what's in my sketchbook. Okay, so this is my sixth finished sketchbook ever. I started it on May 8th in 2022 and ended it November 28th, 2022. So it took me about six months, a little over six months to finish, which for me is actually pretty good because usually it takes me a year to get through a sketchbook because I don't draw as consistently as I wish I did. So for the first page, Funny story, um, <laughs> I drew this as the last thing I ever drew in this sketchbook. Um, I'm one of those people who gets like fear of the first page because I want it to be perfect. So I always just skip it. And then I always tell myself, oh, okay, I'm gonna come back to that. Uh, and then I never do. So that's really fun. Just keep in mind that this is actually drawn on the 28th as I wrote down here. <laughs> But it's just a little sketch that I actually really like, from memory of course, um, and it says, let's begin. Okay, so turns out my first page syndrome is even worse because I skipped three pages <laughs> and I didn't feel like drawing another thing. So um, this is a smiley face courtesy of one of my friends. All right. So this was my actual first page. I started this in May, so that was in the middle of Mermay. Um, if you don't know, Mermay is a monthly challenge where every day in the month of May, you draw one mermaid per day. Um, I'm really bad at monthly challenges because like, I sort of give up halfway through. So I was like, in order to convince myself to really stick this one through, I was like, okay, you can just draw whatever mermaid you want. It can be like, really small doodle or it can just be like a perfect like finished piece anything on the spectrum counts so i really didn't want to put a lot of pressure on myself so that i actually had the motivation to pull through but um my sketchbook here started in day eight so for day eight as you can see i literally just did a bunch of like thumbnail sketches they're not complicated at all and i still called it a day and then for day nine i did this like random mermaid uh, floating in this weird position. For Mermaid, I actually didn't really use that many references, which is kind of big for me because I usually draw from reference a lot, but I really wanted to push myself to like learn how to create poses from my own memory. This page is just swatching and testing. I really wanted to see like how different mediums showed up on this paper. This is a Stillman and Burn, I think Epsilon sketchbook. Yeah, Epsilon series, mixed media, um, so this one is 150 GSM paper. So yeah, just a bunch of swatching. Um, I put some watercolor on here, graphite, charcoal, just to see how things would show up. But this is like really smooth white paper, so not much texture at all. So moving on with more mermaid, I'm so sorry, like all the pages got really smudged because of like, if you use pencil in a wire bound notebook, your pages will like always, almost always smudge, guaranteed. But anyway, um, this one is a little Starbucks barista mermaid. She's just in like a drive through handing a coffee to some car in the middle of the ocean. I don't really know, but I really liked the way this one turned out. Again, everything is from memory. So if the poses look a little awkward, you're gonna have to forgive me for that. But I actually really like the way these little fish turned out. <laughs> They're so cute. Moving on to the next mermaid. Oh, this is not really mermaid, but this was a thumbnail for an idea for mermaid. I was at a museum with some friends and I decided to just sit on the side and like draw sort of what I was seeing. And so this is like a top down street scene. Okay, moving on to mermaid day 12. I really, really, really like this piece. Um, the idea was just like a fisherman who accidentally caught a mermaid. I think it's because I was watching the anime A Lull in the Sea and I got like really inspired. So I drew my own fisherman catching a mermaid from the boat. I was also, again, still drawing things from memory. So I'm just like kind of shocked that I managed to pull this off a little bit. All right, moving on to mermaid date 11. This one, I wanted to draw a mermaid dragging down a ship. So that's what this looks like. Moving on to mermaid day 13. It doesn't really look like a mermaid, but I swear that was the intention. I wanted to capture smoke, but I don't think I did it super well. I don't really know how to do smoke in pencils. So that's something we're still working on. 
Mermaid day 14. Okay, so um, I don't know what happened. Maybe I was watching a nature documentary or something, but I wanted to draw like an eagle, like snatching up, you know how they feed on fish? Well, I was like, okay, what if they caught a mermaid instead? She looks really, really sad. This piece is kind of dark, but uh, that's okay. I wanted to draw a mermaid riding a shark. So I came up with a bunch of ideas. This one is like hunting a human. This is a seaweed mermaid as suggested by my little brother. And then I was trying to figure out what I wanted the shark to look like. I drew this one and then I thought it was too nice looking. <laughs> um, so I drew some more sharks. I had to search up references of sharks for this. So some of my ideas were like, she's swimming with the shark and then she's riding a shark. But then I was trying to figure out the pose because I was like, how do arms work? See? Or like sitting on top of a shark. But I ended up going with this thumbnail. So I sketched it out more fully on this page. And it took me two days. So this counted for both 17 and 18. I do like the way it turned out, but something about her anatomy definitely still looks off. Like just the whole thing looks off. I really struggled with this one. Okay, moving on to Mermaid's Day 19 through 21. Basically these three days I didn't consistently draw. So I just drew three mermaids to compensate. I went over them with ink, which I really like the effect of. Brush pen is like kind of a hard medium to work with because it's so flexible. Like if you just add a little more pressure, your lines get so much thicker. So it's kind of hard to control, but I think um, I managed to make some decent lines with the brush pens this time. Okay, moving on. I didn't like the top half of this page, but I also don't even like the bottom half. Um, this is really lazy mermaid catch-up for day 22 to 24. I actually really like how dynamic some of these poses look, so. All right, for day 28, oh, apple juice. For day 28, I wanted to draw a farmer mermaid. I actually drew this one not in my sketchbook. Let me go find it. This is what it looks like. Sorry, it's wrapped up in a clear bag because it's actually available for sale as an original up on my shop. The idea was like a mermaid in Stardew as I wrote here, because like at the time I was playing a lot of Stardew Valley, although my Stardew phase started like two years ago in COVID. And let me just say, I have over a thousand hours on that game. <laughs> so yeah, but um, I wanted her to be like holding a truffle at first, but it was really hard to get that shape because it's like pixel art and I guess translating it to 3D, it just didn't look as good. So I changed it to a pumpkin and now she's just a basic farmer mermaid. <laughs> but again, all of this was like from memory. And so that's why I'm like really proud of this one. So nearing the end of mermaid, I think I just have some like last minute mermaid sketches. <laughs> like this one's really cute actually to me, but yeah. All right, moving on into June. I wanted to celebrate pride month with some little pride sketches. I really, really, really like drawing couples and because I was more comfortable drawing girls at this point in my sketchbook, I was like, okay, female couples it is. <laughs> okay, uh, this is when I started watching God of High School, so I just sketched out the character. So this page was some pen sketches. I actually vividly remember doodling this. I think like there's something really satisfying about sketching in ballpoint pen. My favorite drink, boba, in the corner there. The other side, some pose practice right here. I really like how dynamic this one looks. And I like the vertical shading on her hair. I like to do vertical shading in general, just because I think it makes like, it just ups the level of a sketch. And then also wanted to do some like sci-fi inspired portraits, I guess. I was taking a utopias and dystopias literature course at my high school at the time. So yeah, um, I got inspired by some of the fiction that we were reading. It's, it's, it's a stretch to say that it's sci-fi, that's for sure. But whatever, it looks good. I like it. All right, so this is a landscape in pen, of course. I was at a park with some friends. It was a really, really nice day and um, I got a little tired. So I think while they went fishing, I was just like sitting on the grass, um, looking out at this really pretty landscape. I was trying to push myself to be expressive with this one. As you can see, it's not super detailed and it's really more about line expressiveness than capturing every little detail. So this was at Sunset Beach in Anacortes, Washington on the 16th of June. This is a little person by the way. <laughs> I don't do that many environment studies, so that one was fun. All right, so this is on my trip to Paris. So uh, this was my first day landing in Paris. I hadn't slept like for the last 24 hours, so I was very, very jet lagged and tired. This is a girl yawning. Um, 
This is a rando on the street. And then this is a street sign. I was sitting in the middle of a cafe. By the way, Paris cafes are so cute, but also so busy. So I was like crowded, just got my food and just decided to doodle this little street sign. So this was on the 28th of June. Wow, I really wasn't drawing a lot, huh? Moving on to this page. I tried using a blending stump for the first time in a while, I think. So that's why you get this sort of soft look to this sketch. Also drew this in Paris. I think I was in front of this really big cathedral slash museum and it was like so cool. And so like this look of wonder on her face was kind of inspired by that, I guess. And the other side of the page is a marble statue study of a statue in a cathedral in Milan. And oh my god, it was like such a pretty statue. I don't think I quite did it justice, but I do really like the way this turned out. There's some areas I really like, like this specific part of her hair. I think I just like like the lines there and again like i mentioned the vertical shading right it just gives it some movement this one was a really fun piece to do and at the time i was traveling around from paris to italy to um some other places as well that i can't remember because my memory is so bad this is why i need to draw things out because then i actually remember the places i've been all right so these are some face studies i did on the plane back from paris to seattle i really really like the way this one turned out i think she just looks really pretty and then uh this one not so much i can't i didn't even finish it because i was like Ew. so yeah but um just some plain sketches I really like to draw on the plane. I don't know, something about like being stuck in one place with like everyone's quiet around you, but there's that ambient noise. Like I just like that environment. It is a little cramped, but it's okay. So testing, testing, perpetual pencils. Basically, I got this really cool pencil that's like has no lead. <laughs> I got this pencil at a museum and I was like, wow, that is a cool pencil. So I had to buy it even though it was like $7. Please don't ever buy a pencil for $7. And as you can tell, I don't even use it now because I don't know where it is. But um, yeah, it was cool. I just thought it was too light for my liking. Like as you can see here, this is like the darkest that lead would go. It's not dark enough for my liking. So I had to draw over it with like regular pencils and that's probably why I stopped using it. Just some doodles testing out those pencils. This is a sketch of my mom. I had some extra time on my hands, so I was like, here, mom, be my model. And she was like, okay. And so I just had her sit and like look in one direction for like 45 minutes. <laughs> it, it does look like her, okay? But it doesn't look exactly like her. That's fine. And then at the top here, we have a teeny little doodle of Anya. This is when I was watching Spy X Family, um, season one, of course. And yeah. Okay, so I think I just lied to you guys about the last page because apparently this one was sketched on my flight back to Vancouver from Paris. So, I think those faces I was sketching on a train ride from like Paris to Italy or like some other place. Okay, I'm really sorry. It's been a while and I forget things really fast, but um, this was a plain sketch. Look. Basically her face is just like too singular liney. It's like too squashed. I feel like her nose needs to come out this way, but from the angle that it was at, I guess it like looked fine to me while I was drawing it. I do like the way her hair turned out though. More sketches, um, basically while I was in Paris, I was um, again from reference and I did a little thumbnail before because I was like, I want this to turn out good. Okay, moving on to some anime studies. <laughs> this is Violet Evergarden, one of my favorite animes of all time. Every single episode made me sob like mad guys, but you know what? I feel like that was the point. More Spyx family art. This is just your doing some action. And moving on to some One Piece characters. We have Perona and um, actually just Perona. <laughs> but yeah, I liked her expression in this one. So decided to copy her and I think she did turn out pretty well. And then also Magna from Black Clover. I think that was the show that I was watching at the time when I drew all of these and Mechi as well. I started a drawing because I was inspired by anime, but you know, as a complete beginner, I didn't have the skills to sort of replicate 
those proportions like sure you can tell yourself yeah tiny chin big eyes like that's how you draw anime but when i was trying to do it it just didn't look right because i hadn't trained my eyes to be able to see the proportions right but now that i've drawn for a lot longer now about five years i've improved my skill at seeing proportions a lot better so even when it comes to these facial proportions which i'm very uncomfortable with i can still assess the anime style and replicate it so much better than i used to be of course this is not perfect it doesn't look exactly like the original but it's definitely a lot closer than what i would be able to do five years ago so it's nice to look back and see that kind of progress all right so i received a set of really cool like charcoal slash pencil like tools it's this thing here the brand is like krita color or something and basically they're like charcoal pencils but designed so that they don't really smudge that much and they also are like matte yeah like you know how graphite from certain angles it's like shiny these are matte which is so 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 nice and it comes with some charcoal too i got it as a set for my um, birthday by one of my friends and i honestly love using them so much because charcoal is so messy right like if you touch it it just comes off on your fingers the way that Criticolor has like designed these pastel things, it looks so like nice. It's got that texture, but it also doesn't really like smudge that much. See, like it's only a little bit left on my finger. So really, really, really happy with those. And I drew this dress because I really wanted to study some fabric wrinkles and it looks great. Like super happy with this sketch even today. Okay, so this page was me trying to like experiment with a potential video game idea. So the idea was like, you play as a character who's deceased, you end up in the afterlife somehow, you're like you're not supposed to be there and you're trying to find your way back. And as you, how you do that is you sort of interact with the residents in this like cloud post heaven life city and then you just like talk to the peep characters and sort of live your life here until you somehow find a way to return to earth so that was the idea um i wanted to design the city here and then um very basic like character outfits and then this would be the main welcome stand the first thing you see as a character when you load in it's like welcome to heaven this was like a logo or like a currency design the town hall that would welcome you it was like very castle-y like very fantasy-ish but um with a little bit of a dark spin on it because like you're dead i think that's like a lot of my art oddly it has like a strange dark spin to it i swear i'm not even like a dark person it just sort of happened i think it's funny honestly like this would be the character option panel where you had like your character and then like some customization like slots for clothing and then like accessories your first name last name how long you've been quote unquote deceased aka how long you've been playing the game and then like um your currency and then some things you've collected this is very like stardew-esque i was still very inspired by stardew obviously nothing ever came of this game because i have no game coding experience whatsoever but i think it'd be cute to do a game at some point uh, okay, so this is a very, very detailed flower pen sketch. I was in my house and um, wanted to do a flower study. I was really like, I love flowers and I really want to be able to draw them well. So I wanted to understand how flowers work. So I like drew out some petal stages here. I was just trying to figure out what the geometry of a petal was because what makes flowers look so complicated is the fact that they're all overlapped, right? So I was like, how do I capture that? I think it was really valuable because now I'm better at drawing flowers. Moving on to some rant art. <laughs> this one was a pretty emotional piece. I remember it was like the middle of the night and I was like, oh, like I'm just so frustrated. It was really interesting because this is the first time I've tried to make like negative space letters. So like really coloring all that like pencil in was really good. Let me release my frustration, I guess. But yeah, she's just covering her ears. This is like not anatomically possible. Um, don't try this at home, kids. It was, it was fun to draw, I guess. And then something a little bit sadder, just a girl sitting on a step. And this is just a little happy boy running. I liked the way the pants are like so baggy, so. Moving on, this is like a challenge where you draw a bunch of shapes and then you turn them into things. So I was really having a lot of fun with this one, just making shapes into random ass things. Um, and it also pushes my creativity because I don't really know like what to make them, right? Um, but yeah, some of these I really like. Like I actually really like the way this fish one turned out. I think it's cool. 
um, and I like this like otter thing, I guess. Because the shapes are so random, it forces you to come up with totally random ideas, so it's a really, really good creativity exercise. I really recommend it, but it does take longer than expected. I think this actually took me like over an hour for sure to do. This one is gotta be my favorite, like it's just so funny. So this was drawn on my flight to Los Angeles. So I go to USC, the University of Southern California. So I used to live in Seattle. So that's where all of my sketches were from before. I was flying to college to like live on my own for the very first time. So really exciting, but definitely a bittersweet moment. Starting a new stage of your life is always really exciting. But at the same time, there's a lot that you're leaving behind and change is always a little scary. So, And then some flower studies that I also drew on this plane ride. Okay, so I didn't draw like at all for the first weeks of college, um, but this was the very first drawing I did actually right sitting here, like in this photo, I'd be sitting right here um, and drawing my view on the metro. Still brings back good memories. And my next drawing ever was on my flight back to Seattle. Um, I actually flew back to Seattle just a few weeks after moving to Los Angeles. I really wanted to study flowers again. Also really practicing with pen. No pencil sketch before this, I just went straight in with pen. So really forcing my eye to look at proportions properly and be really intentional about every line that I put down. All right, and then I didn't draw at all <laughs> on my trip back to Seattle. So the next thing I drew in here is my flight back to LA. Um, I wanted to practice some perspective. This is just based on a photo I took of USC at 6 a.m. as I was leaving for my flight to Seattle. So this is shockingly the very first like watercolor painting in this sketchbook, mostly because this paper, like I mentioned, is smooth. So it doesn't really suit watercolor that well. But yeah, um, she's just, a girl <laughs> there's not really much to say here like the way the colors turned out i got this new watercolor set um the kurataki gonzai watercolors i really wanted them for like two years and i finally just like bought one and i love them like they're so pigmented but i don't do watercolor as often as i should i was thumbnailing out a piece here i had a sore throat i was sick for like three weeks it sucked so this is my rant art about it some portfolio planning notes, and then some bird drawings. I had an assignment for class where I had to draw three birds and because I'm extra, I decided to do three full-sized like bird birds. This one's bird one. This one is bird two. I really like the way the wings turned out here. And this is bird three, who I think is so cute by the way. Look how chubby, look how chubby it is. Oh my gosh. Um, I actually somehow improved at drawing birds as I was doing this. Like the first one took so long and this one took like 15 minutes max. So that's kind of sick to see, I guess. Some no ref doodles in pen again. I was really enjoying the feeling of pen, but I don't really like any of these particularly. <laughs> and then these are some doodles I was doing in the middle of my class called Innovators Forum. Innovators Forum is basically a class where we do a business pitch every two weeks. So I was sitting here doodling as all of my classmates were up there pitching. It was my version of trying to practice some life drawing because I'm really bad at capturing poses quickly. So I was like, okay, I want to practice that. Again, more life drawing because I was into that at the time. I went out and sat in the middle of USC Village and um, sketched some people walking by, sitting down nearby, etc. It was a fun experience. I don't life draw enough, I think, so really want to do that again. And in the same session, I wanted to practice some two-point perspective by drawing this lamppost that was in front of me. Okay, more rants art. I wrote alone again at the bottom. This was after I ended the relationship I was in at the time. And uh, yeah, I mean, pretty self-explanatory, right? Like a pretty sad-ish drawing. <laughs> it's kind of hard to see what's going on, but basically her hair is just like flying in front of her face. And this was another painting in my sketchbook. I like the way this turned out, but it's definitely not the best I could do at all. Gotta practice painting some more. And this is probably one of my favorite sketches in this sketchbook. This was a sketch for a painting I did titled If Only. Again, still about the breakup. Um, obviously it changed a lot from the initial sketch, but I, like I decided to make the guy transparent, for example. But yeah, still really like the way the sketch is here. 
Um, this is when I was starting to experiment with adding some more like expressive but nonsensical lines in my art. You'll see that pop up a lot more. And I really just like ran with that idea. I've just always liked making like cool flowy lines. So I incorporate that into my future sketches as well. This was just some practice based off a Pinterest photo. Some no reference sketches of some heads also done in class. But yeah, I like the composition of it too. All right, more drawing from memory, as I said. <laughs> this is me on my way to class late. Just a random guy. Um, these are the lyrics to a song I was listening at the time, but you like this, guys? I know, he's pretty cool. This guy is definitely a mood. All right, so this is when I went to Lightbox Expo. If you don't know what Lightbox Expo is, it's like a big, big artist convention, and it's perfect for people like me who are mostly like social media artists. Um, so a lot of cool people showed up. I met a bunch of social media stars that I had been following for a really long time and also some mutuals, which was awesome. As I was waiting for one of the panels, an animation panel with Aaron Blaise actually, um, I drew this guy who was standing near me. I actually really, really like the way this turned out. Like, I don't know, something about the silhouette is good. And then the trash can that was right next to him, of course. I really like this girl actually. Moving on to probably my most iconic sketch in this sketchbook. I drew this late at night and then I posted a reel that was like low-key ASMR-y and it really blew up on my Instagram, like 1.5 million views as of right now, which is bonkers, like literally crazy. And I do really like the way this sketch turned out, so yeah. Moving on to some doodles. I really like this colorful page. <laughs> I actually f up her head, so I had to like put a sticky note over it, as you can see, and redraw it, but it's a little better now. And then I really like this pose, just like a dancer. Um, I really, really like drawing dancers, like the poses are just so good so good and then because it was halloween season drawing some monsters these were actually really really fun i have like no experience drawing monsters so um it gets you to see things in a different light that's for sure moving on to some figure studies that i was doing we are nearing the end of october her silhouette particularly is good and i think i got the shapes pretty good down in this one as well but my favorite is this little bridge at the bottom. <laughs> so, so cute, I love it. And I think it just like, with the minimal amount of lines, you can see what she's doing. And I just like, like the expressiveness of this pose. More figure sketches. I really like the way this one turned out. And the rest of them are like, hella mid. Well, this one's cool too, I guess. This page, just some random pen sketching. And on the other side is my Halloween drawing. Um, it's like a skeleton dancing with a woman. I still really like the composition of this, but yes, it was based off of a photo reference, so can't take credit for the pose here. But yeah, this was drawn on the 31st. Happy Halloween, everyone. I've actually never drawn a skull before, which is kind of crazy, so that was my first time. Moving on to some class sketches. I was in the middle of class and the guy next to me was like, how do you draw someone looking down? And I was like, okay, let me just try to do that because I'm actually bad at that too. And uh, it like sort of worked out, but you can tell she's looking down, but it's not actually really from a top angle. So that's something I still need to work on for sure. But I do like the way she turned out. And then some ballpoint pen sketches in a different class. I really, really, really like the way her face turned out. It's really experimenting with line quality and like shape here. And then a random fist that I actually think turned out fairly well. And then some poses. Moving on to another random sketch of my sketchbook. I do love the way this turned out. I think her silhouette is cool. And again, with the lines, right? This is also one of my favorite sketches in my sketchbook here just two people under an umbrella pretty much from here on in the sketchbook they're all like pencil sketches that i've done really late at night like i don't know recently i've just been so busy like the only time i get to draw is practically after 11 or 12 a.m and then i just sit down and grind out a page of my sketchbook but it's been super super fun and i really really like this one the title is here let's share like, you know, a little story behind the action. This page is just a random pen sketch that I don't really like, also drawn in class. And then um, some piece ideas that I never ended up doing, and then heads. <laughs> so this one is a pencil sketch I really love, also done late at night. Um, it's like half based off a reference photo. So like the pose is based off the reference photo, but the clothes are my own imagination. 
um, but yeah, I really love the way this turned out. Again, you can really see what I'm talking about with the lines, right? Like, they don't really make sense per se, but they add an element of interest and like movement to the drawing that I really like. And I think it really speaks to my style some more. And this is also when I stopped drawing on the back because I think I will be selling a lot of these sketches um, as originals later on after I post the sketchbook tour. So keep your eyes open for those. More couples. I really like the way this one turned out. Again, the clothes I made up. So, you know, baby steps at a time. We're really trying to get to the point where I can draw things without using references, but I think the poses are still hard for me. So at least clothing I can do on my own, clothing and hair. I've always been like a hopeless romantic and I just like love all things romance. So being able to incorporate that in my art has been really satisfying, but I used to be too intimidated to draw couples a lot. So this has been helpful for me. Another pencil sketch I did in class. I really like the way this one turned out too. Um, it's been a while since I've done like a face taking up the whole page. So this one was really satisfying. And again, you see the crazy lines, right? Like it just adds a little bit of something. And then some more doodles. Again, no references for these. This one is inspired by my friend in class. She has like the cutest round face and I was like, that's perfect. It's so cute. And so I drew a little girl about it and colored it later, but I like the way this turned out. Drew my pencil sharpener for some reason. Drew my friend sitting in class. And then here I was ideating for my Meet the Artist post, which you can see here. I wanted to experiment with like a less conventional layout. So I ended up choosing this pose where I'm sort of standing holding the phone in front of me and then that's where you can see the information about myself. And this brings us to the end of my sketchbook. I really wanted to go all out for this last page. So we've got something a little goofy, a little cute, two people munching on some watermelon. I went back to Seattle for Thanksgiving and I had the most delicious watermelon, I swear to God. Or maybe it just seemed really delicious because I haven't had good watermelon at USC in a hot second. So a little bit of a watermelon appreciation post. Colored this with some Copic markers and I really do love the way this turned out. Yeah, really going out with a bang, I guess. And then after that, I wrote some things that I've learned throughout this sketchbook. I like to do this at the end of every sketchbook just to reflect on some things that I've picked up. So the first thing was line quality. I think it's really improved over this sketchbook. Um, drawing scenes, stories, and couples. Getting better at drawing from memory, like I mentioned. <laughs> and then this one was I understand perspective now. Definitely have gotten better at understanding two point, one point, and three point perspective. And that is it for this sketchbook. Thank you so much for coming along with me and learning more about the drawings in the sketchbook. Yeah, you can find more of my work on Instagram at wavylinesem. And if you want to pick up some of the sketches towards the end of this sketchbook as originals, they will be on my shop. All of the links will be in the description. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.